Hey guys. This is Nitish Mittal from Placement Mentor. In this video, I will explain in detail how a web session works. What is a session? Session is one of those computing terms that refers to seemingly different things. A shell session, a TCP session, a login session, a desktop session, a browser session, a server session etc. This makes it confusing to understand what exactly a session is. Same for take cache, another confusing term. Database cache, browser cache, framework cache, network cache. But actually what defines those confusing terms, is the use they're describing. So, the first thing to understand for sessions is, their use. Use of a session. Generally you should understand session as the different states of an application, during the time a user is interacting with it. It is specific to the user. I would even say, a session is an instance of the interaction of a user with an application. Now more specifically for a web session, the session is a data structure that an application uses to store temporary data, that is useful only during the time a user is interacting with the application. It is also specific to the user. For example, you could save the user's name in the session so that you don't have to query the database every time you need it, or you could store data in the session to save state between pages, between pages of a payment process for example. Think of it as a volatile memory quickly accessible, that is allocated to each user who is using the application, and when the user quits, it is destroyed. This is the general concept. The storage mechanism and how it is implemented is then specific to the application. This temporary storage could be on the file system in text files, on a database or in the internal memory of the program executing the application. The second thing to understand is the structure of a session. Structure of a session. The session is a key value pair data structure. Think of it as a hash table where each user gets a hash key to put their data in. This hash key would be the session ID. A session data structure would look like this. And when you say, my session, you would refer to your entry in the session object. Every user is able to access only their session. The session can be stored on the server, or on the client. If it's on the client, it will be stored by the browser, most likely in cookies, and if it is stored on the server, the session IDs are created and managed by the server. So, if there are a million users connected to the server, there will also be a million session IDs for those users on the server. From now, I will focus only on server-side sessions. How does a session work? So how exactly do users access their session? For a single user application, like a desktop application, there is only one user, so there is also one session. It is not difficult for the application to make the connection between the user and their session data. However, for a web application, a server has multiple clients. How does it know which session is yours? That's where the session ID comes into play. The general principle is that, you, as the client, give the server your session ID, and in return the server grants you access to your session data, if it finds your session ID stored in its session data store. The session structure is like a data locker for users, and the key for the locker is the session ID. The server is the guy who shows you which one is your locker. Let us look more in details how it works. Let us start from the moment when you land on a web page. When you receive a web page from the server, along with the page content itself, the server sent you, in general, in a cookie, the session ID, that it set to identify your connection among all the requests that it gets. Make the experiment, open your console and check the cookies. You will see something that looks like this. JSP will send you JSession ID, and ASP, ASP Session ID. Here the back end is PHP. After you logged in, the application validated your password and login, and saved your user ID in the session, so that every time you will make a request, you won't have to log in again. This will be detailed later. Now let us review this diagram to understand what is going on, when you make another request to get more data. For example, let's say you landed on Gmail inbox after you logged in, and now you want to navigate to your drafts page. Step 1. You send a HTTP request to the server asking for the drafts page. Along with this HTTP request you send your session ID to tell the server. Hey, it's me from before, give me my drafts page now. 
The session ID is usually sent in cookies, but it can also be sent in GET or POST parameters. Whatever the technique is, the session ID just needs to be sent to the server. Step 2. The server receives your request. Before it gives you your drafts page, it checks your session ID, looks it up in its session data store. It finds 5, your session ID, so it makes the data in entry 5 available to the code engine, PHP, Java, Ruby. Step 3. The server then executes the code corresponding to your request. Give me the drafts page. Step 4. The code starts by getting your user ID from the session made available by the server earlier, then it uses it to ask the database, give me the drafts of the user who has this user ID. Step 5. Finally when the code got your drafts from the database, it creates an HTML page, puts your drafts in it, and hands it to the server. Step 6. The server sends you your drafts page, along with your session ID. Logged in state. In this exchange, you could have just sent your user ID in your request, and told the server that you want the drafts of this user ID. But that would mean that anybody who knows your user ID, would also be able to get your drafts. And you don't want that for your private data. You prefer that the application sends this data only to you. So to protect your data the application makes you log in first, to make sure the person asking for the data is really you. And normally for any request for private data, it should ask you who you are first. If there was no session ID during this exchange, when you asked your drafts page, the server would not know the drafts of who you're asking, and it would ask you to log in first. HTTP is a stateless protocol so it doesn't save the fact that you are already logged in. At each request, HTTP doesn't know anything about what happened before, it just carries the request. So for any request for private data you would have to log in again to make sure the application knows this is really you. This would be very annoying. That's the problem that sessions solve. To avoid logging in all the time after the first time, sessions keep you logged in while you are connected to the server. Basically, after you logged in the first time, the server remembers in the session that this is really you and lets you ask for more data without asking again who you are. That's how sessions are very useful. In this diagram, we can observe how user connections are identified and maintained by the server, thanks to session IDs. Session management is a feature of the server, you need to activate it. For a static website that doesn't serve private data, for example, you would not need to activate session management on your server. Keeping you logged in is one main use of the session, but sessions can also be used to save temporary data that are completely independent of the logged in state. You could decide to put some data in session just because it is quicker to access. Also, as a side note, from the service point of view, one connection equals one session ID. So if you connect from two different browser, the server will create two session IDs. You should remember that the session ID only identifies your connection to the server. All the user identification logic is handled by the application. I hope this video helped you understand how does a web session work. If you have any questions around it, or any feedback, let me know in the comments section. If you like the video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel, so that you can get a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you for your time.